One place that's helping with the learning that's both in cognitive as well as in physical embodiment of this thing, what we call embodiment robotics, is gaming. And the reason gaming is actually very popular and useful nowadays is because we're using games to help train machines. Hi everyone, Mo Hafez here with another episode of Beyond the Byte. And today we're talking about a really interesting topic. What do gaming and AI have in common? More than you might think, actually. Today we're actually looking at how gamers are driving advances in AI and robotics and why the next tech revolution needs gamers just as much as it needs developers. Stay tuned. So we all know about AI and machine learning. We know that these LLMs, these large language models, take data and they need that data so they can learn. Another place where we're using all of that data for learning is in robotics. There's actually two kinds of behaviors that need to be trained when it comes to robotics. There's the cognitive behaviors, and then there's the physical behaviors. In other words, the ability to balance and move and do all of these things that robots do, or that humans do without thinking because we've learned it as we grew up. But robots actually have to be taught what to do when they walk over a slippery surface and when they're picking objects and putting them down. That's physical. The cognitive part is we've got the large language models now actually being able to help the physical parts of uh, robotics in terms of the logic and reasoning skills and computer vision that allows them to actually do things in real life. But one place where that's helping with the learning that's both in cognitive as well as in physical embodiment of this thing, what we call embodiment robotics, is gaming. And the reason gaming is actually very popular and useful nowadays is because we're using games to help train machines. Now, we've all heard of the big company NVIDIA, which is, of course, dominating the Wall Street charts with how well it's been doing. NVIDIA started off as a gaming company. They were building chipsets for games. Now, these chipsets, actually, the graphics cards ended up being very useful for Bitcoin mining and now for AI because of their floating point operation potential. They have a high number of flops and it's because of their compute power. So in addition to a CPU, you've got these awesome beefy GPUs from NVIDIA that help you do that. But the other aspect, NVIDIA is actually currently doing this, is when it comes to gaming, we use games as simulation environments for the purpose of training AI and robotics. So what it takes now is being a gamer allows you to think about how to train machines in a virtual environment. So for example, if you are somebody who plays a 3D platformer game, the ability of jumping and moving from place to place and avoiding obstacles and ensuring that you know you don't get hit, those are all things that can be used to train AI and robotics. And what NVIDIA has actually been doing is using games to train AI and robots in a virtual environment that can then be carried over to the real environment. This is one of the really what we call moonshot moments that NVIDIA is looking to do. They are doing this by creating what we call digital twins. These digital twins are essentially virtual environments that model the real life environment. So an example that we've seen is a factory floor. You want this factory floor to be run by robots. And these robots need to be able to move around and pick things up and avoid obstacles and do all of that. Well, one way that we can use games to do this is by creating a digital twin of that factory floor and the robot actors in it. And in that gamified environment, we can basically allow all the interactions that could happen. Robots bumping into each other or picking objects or things falling on them or them having to walk around this digital factory floor. All of that can be used to train the algorithms so that we can then take all of that training and apply it to the real physical versions of them, not the digital twin, that then allows them to function in our society in their chosen tasks. So for example, on a factory floor, in a better way. They've been trained in a virtual environment. They can fall a thousand, a hundred thousand times, a million times. They can learn from all of that. And this helps, of course, with the AI training and development. So this is one place where gamifying the AI modeling and training is a very revolutionary concept. And this concept is actually not very new. It actually, when we talk about training, when we talk about learning, there are two ways to teach AI. One way is by basically taking all the data that you want, what we call historical or data that already exists, and feeding it to the AI algorithm so that it can learn from that data. And then based on that, it can essentially do the task that you've given it. When AI was first used in chess, AI was taught on grandmaster games of chess. So it was given thousands and thousands of these 
games played by chess masters and it learned from them. But a better version of that chess playing AI came out later called Alpha Zero. And that one essentially learned by having the rules of chess fed to its algorithm. So it learned just the basic rules of chess, what moves are legal, what moves are illegal, what it can do, and then the object of the game itself. And in nine hours, it played itself an incalculable number, well, actually it might've been a calculable number of ways, but it played itself a whole bunch of times, to put it lightly. And in so doing, in nine hours, it was able to master the game and became good enough to defeat the best human chess players and has not been defeated since. This is when we talk about gamifying AI learning and development. It's all about creating a game of the type of problem that you are trying to solve. And in so doing, you can get the AI to optimize by playing that game over and over and over again to find the best way to win or to achieve success in that game. And in so doing, it creates its own data, pure data, that can then be used to fuel the actual development on the practical end. This is a great way, essentially. So this is how, when we talk about building games, this is how building games is now helping us solve problems and helping us engage in a simulated environment in a way that allows us to train these models in real life. So if you're a gamer, this is a great field for you to get into because this is one way that you can take your love of gaming, your love of learning how to optimize in any setting, in a video game or even in a board game, and use it to be able to build simulations that solve real world problems and applications of AI and robotics. So I encourage all gamers and tech enthusiasts to stay engaged with this development, add to your skills, take your gaming, and supplement it with AI learning, and you can help us develop the next generation of AI algorithms and robotics. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and look forward to the next one.